if you were to see what it looks like in here, it's kind of on some Wayne, Wayne's World environment. You know, there's the tower there and monitor. You know I mean, like this, it's just set up as <laughs> just kind of like a mini TV station. You know I mean? Yeah, yeah, I do know exactly because my place is exactly like it. And what starts as a really nice, humble living room for, a t <laughs> for a t you know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All of a sudden, it's like, where did all these fucking tripods come from? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, killer, killer, podcast, killer, killer, official dot com. <laughs> you need the television app 24 7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top fives, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Beatbox created. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller Podcast. Yes, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, the Killer Keller Podcast live in effect. Another one of my favorite moments when I get the opportunity to uh, get super fanish a little bit on this. You know, a hero of mine is on the other end. But before we get into that, big shout out to GraffitiKings.co.uk. If you haven't checked out the Kellervision app free download, you know what to do. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, we have Triple Threat, Visual Scratch Pickle, Beat Junkies, Legendary DJ, Shortcut Inside the Place. How are you, brother? Salute, brother. How you doing? Good. It's a pleasure, pleasure to have you on. As, 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 and I quite rightly stated, fan first, bro. Oh, thank you so much, man. I appreciate that. Yo, you've been putting in the work too, though, man. Yeah, it's been a while, isn't it? <laughs> See, we're the same era, you know what I'm saying? So. Yeah, we are in the same era, actually, to be fair. We pretty much share a very same age space, don't we? Absolutely. How's it feel for you being, uh, you know, because like you say, we walk in the same paths. How's it feel for you to be our age and doing what we're doing, almost going through different, it's almost like going through different solar systems of our career. How's it feel for you? I think, I, I mean, I, I feel great, you know what I mean? I think, I think this, it, you know, I think just DJing and music, in general, just keeps keeps us young, you know. Um, yeah, you know, I mean, as far as just, you know, being on top of like the new music, but um, you know, but being able to break the classics to the younger generation, you know, what I mean, so I don't feel too, you know, I feel uh, as an elder, yeah, like you know, that definitely, but um, you know, that's cool too. Like, you know, I, I, it's dope that we're we're experienced to you know to 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 show the the younger generation like what's up. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, and get them and get them up on 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 different things that they they might have missed. You know what I'm saying? So, I'm with that. I'm with that. Um, it it does keep you. It makes you more. It strengthens you as an artist. It also makes you feel like yo, it's a little bit more egoless. You're 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 there to move, help, show and and give more than before. It was all more about establishing yourself as an artist now it's more about giving to the culture a little bit more mm -hmm. isn't it absolutely djing has definitely uh evolved and it's something i've talked about previously but i think for a game for us being of a similar age i i find it astounding that i remember back in 1997 a lot of viewers will testify to me talking about this before and a lot of them were there as well when you played uh, alongside Mixmaster Mike and Cuba, uh, Fresh Ninety Seven. Oh yeah, okay, <laughs> Boston, right? That's right. How do you know you remembered? Hey. Oh yeah, I remember that real clear. That I mean, for somebody, I mean, I was the same age as you watching you do it, and I was just like you, you and as, as a fan, again, godlike, watching you guys do this thing that blew the fucking doors off of turntablism in the UK without question. It was like seminal. I, I mean, I was just honored to be part of it, man. Like, I'm, 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 I'm just looking back on that whole era. It's amazing, you know, like being able to go like, you know, and being in the same hotel as like, you know, with, you know, just all the legends, Charlie Chase, you know, uh, I, I don't know if you heard, but, you know, uh, Mixmaster Mike, myself and Kubert, we went to London with, uh, um, with Kaz, Grandmaster Kaz, and Charlie Chase, we all went digging together. Stop it! Yeah, man. Let's just—I I actually still got that on video, like a, a like a um, camcorder video, home that, video yeah. style. No way. Yeah, but just well, just nuts, man. It's so so dope. He's um yeah he he's the embodiment. Kaz is like the embodiment of all di all hip hop disciplines rolled into one. Absolutely, he's like the Swiss Army knife. You know what I mean? He can do it. 
you could do it yes. all. You're such a dope selector as well, you know. So. Oh, and your 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 versatility on the decks. For those that you don't know about the DJ shortcut, as I say, visible scratch pickles, Qbert, Mixmaster Mike, the Beat Junkies. I mean, I mean, the, the I think when it gets to these certain levels of DJ uh, career stats, you know, you guys need your own basketball cards. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean, you need to have some sort of number ranking or something because you're like, you know, I just you. And when I say discipline for you, you could be the archetype b boy, pat to the back, doing the, the beat, you know, the beat cutting of a, of an ensemble. But then you can fucking nail a club set. You can nail like a routine. You've you you know you. You, and you can be the teacher at a Red Bull Academy. Like, you're so versatile. I, I try to be, man. You know what I mean? Like, I, just, I, I think just from my mobile DJ background, I just want to not be caught not being able to do what I'd have to do in front of a crowd. You know what I mean? Like, that's, that's uh, you know, being part of a sound, you know, doing weddings and all that stuff. I have to learn early, like, you got to switch it up and be on top of it, like, right then and there. You know, whoever's in front of you. You know what I'm saying? So... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where did yeah, it all man. begin? Where did it all begin, bro? Where did all of this start? Man, um, I started in 87. Um, and I just got inspired from going to my first school dance as, as a middle school. You know what I mean? Like in middle school. And just, you know, uh, the, the Bay Area has a big DJ community, you know, a big history yeah. of DJing. So, um, yeah, um, I, just, I, I went to one of my school dances and then right inside the, the, the cafeteria... There was a, a whole little setup of just like a wall of speakers on each side, and then like a whole truss of lighting. You know, what I mean? like, it looked like a little mini rock concert. And I was just so intrigued walking in, like, whoa, you know what I mean? And then in the middle of all that, of all that was no, no band, but just one DJ, just mixing. And, I, and ever since then, I got hooked, man. It it's just it seems to me that for the mid nineties, that the Bay Area was like serving DJs like. You guys, I don't know what you had in your breakfast, but it was just like, yeah. No, that, that's it. I mean, you know, like I said, we're, all of us, you know, each and every one of us, uh, Mike, Q, Apollo, we all come from mobile sound systems. And, um, you know, you. but, you know, battling back then was, we used to battle back then as well. Um, sound systems used to battle. So whoever the w winner was, work got around and that's how you got work. You that's I mean? amazing. So back to the roots of things, you guys were doing the proper sound system thing. Yeah, absolutely. I did sound systems from 87 to 95. I was still battling, and I was still doing sound systems. Was that a Bay thing? Was that a Bay Area thing? It was a Bay thing for sure, I think, in Cal uh, California as well. But in the Bay Area, it was a little different because it was predominantly Filipino. Mm. So the Filipino sounds. And then, and then the early sound systems were playing a lot of freestyle and Miami bass. That was like the big music. Oh, that's the shit, though. Yeah. So it was really bass heavy, real bass heavy stuff. I mean, those were the first two genres of music I really got into when I first started DJing. So, um, but you know, with that, then you start learning about everything else. But like, like I said, all of us come from that. And I, I'll give you a scenario too. Um, the way we used to battle was like in one ballroom, in each corner of the room would be a setup separately. You know what I mean? Like sort of four little concert setups. Like, you know, what? and it's like, um, it's like almost, I don't know if you're familiar with car shows, but they would judge everyone like, you, the, so the winner tonight of the best sound was so-and-so, you know what I mean? And then That's amazing. And then the, the best lighting had, you know, who, who had the best setup here for lighting? And then, you know, them. And then the overall DJ, like, you know, it was just that's like. That's amazing. And then the, when the word got out about that, that's when people started getting booked out for like, you know, weddings and birthdays and school dances and stuff like that so yeah it's just the history in the bay area for for djs we go deep you know what i'm saying and i think it's like a mini ecosystem of of really seen uh building yeah absolutely like that's why there's only uh, uh i think there was a few of us who kind of when that scene died down there was a few of us who just took djs and just kept it you know still kept it going you know yeah so. yeah, yeah, yeah yeah is there any is, is any particular names that you you for one were like, yo, those guys or that DJ was amazing, but never really got the light of day over there, bef you know, prior to the explosion? Well, the big, D I mean, the big, D I'll, I'll name the big DJs. Um, there was a DJ named Genie G. Okay. He was the first guy, this is, I'm, this is probably circa 1982, 83. And um, <laughs> the music he was playing was just disco and metal. 
Oh my, he's already a friend of mine. Whoa! Yeah. And then, <laughs> but this is how, and can you imagine, had, this is a proper sound system where, and he was the first one to bring, you know, because like, you know, he was the first one to bring anvils to the whole thing. You know what I mean? Like, like an anviled out speaker and, or an anvil uh, turntables in an anvil case. Because back no then, uh, it was really, you know, it was really like you know you, you kind of hooked up with your dad on the weekend and went to the to the to the um, to the, the the lumber store and made your own everything. That was kind of like a you know that was kind of a thing. That doesn't were, that make it more fun? It does, yeah. man. I mean, you know, it's it's it, one thing with the Filipinos, man. I think we're the, you know just being intuitive of how like just to make something out of nothing. Like almost you know, it, it, I, I kind of compared to what the Jamaicans had. That's why when I when I got into dance hall and I learned about sound systems with the Jamaican scene, I'm like, oh man, they kind of did the same thing that we yeah. did, and so I, I had no idea, you know what I mean? Like, so that's why I got into um, that's why I got into reggae and, and sound systems a lot because of just the relation. You know what I mean, I, I can relate to what they they were they were doing, making yeah. you know, grabbing a little bit of this and that and that to make something big. It's fucking genius. Like I speak to graffiti writers about this quite a lot, and one thing that they really I get really hooked on is like prior to like, you know, the Montanas and the Molotovs and the, you know, the, all the, you know, the brands of the day. The brands, yeah. They just used to have to like, you know, get a, get a hairspray cap and, a, yeah. and use some dodgy like, shitty, you know. Shitty Rust-Oleum, like, like all the, the, the crappy brands and, you know, <laughs> the running brand, you know what I mean? That's yeah. what I'm saying now, like, you know, with the, yeah, exactly. The Molotov or the Montanas, like you get the perfect line and it comes out nice and, <laughs> It's it's insane, man. Like, yeah. you see it, yeah. You must see. It. I mean, we get inundated with this stuff on Instagram, and it's like, yo, this is almost it's almost too perfect. You're right. It kind of loses that kind of raw, right? That little raw, yeah, kind of edgy, yeah. I mean, yo, but that's like you know, and that go, that goes for everything, right? Like even with DJing, now we're DJing off the computer. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like it's just it's they're just you know, I know yeah. that um. I know that uh, uh, technology and, you know, it's inevitable, but at the same time, it's like, you know, that's why I still do 45 sets. That's why I still do mm-hmm. vinyl sets, just so to keep my sanity and know that, like, you know, kind of keep sharp in that. Because, you know, when yeah. I always say to myself, if, you, if you're a start, if you're a DJ and you start off with vinyl, you get sharper. For yeah, I mean, sure. You know, like, Serato's nothing to you kind of thing, you know what I mean? Like, it's just... It's just yeah, yeah, it's just a transferable skill. Just, that... Exactly, it's just... Yeah, exactly, just a new something. That's a good point because you can't go back. Like if you if you start off on some techers and you're doing it on I don't know yeah like you say tracked or something like that you can't go back to that era of forty fives carry the bag get into the club break your back kind of DJ s- situations can you? Right. It doesn't work. Not really. I mean you know it's um it just depends on you know like like I said like now now we're talking about streaming right? Mm-hmm. I mean. Now I could do vinyl sets at home. In front of, yeah, let's of get people. into this for the heads because you, uh, congratulations, your one year anniversary on Twitch, five days a week. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Dude. Yeah, big, I just had a Babu and Craze as my guests. So it was dope. Peoples. It was real dope. My people. It was cool, yeah. For those out there that, that ate, which I'd be very surprised, but I know each people... Each individual tackles Twitch in a different way. I mean, it's almost like a crazy game mixed with fruit machines, which you can do, do whatever you I mean. It's a, it's a whole different world. Explain the, the premise of your show. Well, my show, I, I go on five days a week, but every night I do a different theme. Right. A different genre, a different genre of music. So, like, one night, like, Wednesday, I'll usually, op- you know, tonight it's going to be, like, 45 sessions with Scratch Bassett. That's our guest. Right. But, but then tomorrow, what am I doing tomorrow? Um... I think I'm doing um, a new edition, the group, new edition. Like, I'm doing yeah. all night of new edition, everything, everything of all members, doesn't matter what, it, just everything they touched, right? That's so and genius. On, and then on Friday, I'm doing Stone's Throw versus Ruckus. Like, Ooh. You know what I'm saying? Ah, so just, just, to me, you know, when I stream, it's always, I think to myself, like, what would make me want to stay in the room and be, yeah. you know, and what would keep me engaged? What would I be interested in? And, uh, you know, it's... Man, thankfully, I'm really thankful it's been working. So, you know, people are yeah, checking. And, sure. Yeah, man. So I'm, I'm just, like I said, it's a new world for all of us. I, I, I'm, I was just uh, happy to, and, 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 you know, thankful to be to adapt to it early, you know? Yeah, for sure. You know what would be a cool 
a cool concept for if you've already you've probably already done it. But um, rock, best rock rap rap records, you know. Best rock rap record. Yeah. Ooh. You know, like do a whole session of like I don't know, Public Enemy and Anthrax, and then oh, like yeah, yeah, that's what. Well, that's my favorite record, actually. Me too. That was the game changer of a, of a record, huh? That's something like um, I'd have to confer with the with the Miss Master Mike because he's he was doing <laughs> you know he yo he was opening for Metallica, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah, you know. I'll <laughs> what, what was interesting about. You guys, the three scratch pickles that I saw on the first outing, we getting into Mike here, is you all three of you came with it was almost like some Power Rangers Voltron shit and you all had you could tell off the bat when I first saw you guys live the the dynamics and um what each person carried as a as a signature move. It's like your influences individually were you could see them, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Well, explain um, to me. Well, explain to me what how you felt. You know, what would your how would you define your role in a in a situation like the three P scratch pickles? Uh, I'm the backbeat of the group. I'm the drummer. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I keep the time. That's, mm-hmm. that's always that's how I that was my comfort zone. That's what that's you know, and just listening listening to them. Like you know, Q would be the lead scratcher. Mike would be the fill in. You know what I mean? So I I kind of vibe off of them and just you know, and over the time I learned how to like. You know when to come in and when to kind of just chill and not, you know, just keep, just keep the beat. You know what I mean? It's, it's, um, yeah, you know, just more. I was definitely more drums orientated. You know what I mean? I was the, I'm the, I was the beat juggler out of the group. You know what I mean? So, you made it seem so easy. Like, you guys, you just made it look like it was almost like a spaceship came down into the room. It was like, yeah, this is like they've been doing this all the whole time. Like, you look like you've been doing it all the time. <laughs> oh man, it's just a lot of, pr- you know, it's, it's, it's it, like just the way I hooked up with uh, Mike and Q it was just a lot of jam sessions st- stuff. You know, what I mean, I happen to be there. You know, what I mean, like, I mean, also for me, you gotta understand too. I was a the little kid watching them as I was growing up, and you know, they were the big names in the Bay Area. You know, what I'm saying. And it was blow your mind. Were you were you imposter syndroming a little bit? Oh man, I was tripping out. You know, what I mean, like I, I was you know, if you knew that they were gonna be at a gig. It's like, oh, you know what I mean? Like, oh, we got to go, kind of thing. You know what I yeah. mean? And, 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 but, you know, for me to be part of that group that I was looking up to, it just blows my mind to this day, you know what I mean? So it's crazy. You know, you know I never thought I'd be uh, um, part of that equation. You know what I'm saying? When you were in a, when you're in a situation like that, and that, you know, like you say, juggling, and the, the imperfections, very rarely did I ever hear that from you, and st- even now. If you go onto any of the videos, it's it's you, the, the the levels are super high. But going back to the technical side of things and how how DJing's progressed, good and bad, um, it it often feels like yeah, man, like it's those imperfections in a beat juggle that actually makes your mind fill in the blanks, doesn't it? Yeah, you know, like if that's the fun part about making routines and kind of trying to trying to trip people out when you make them. You know what I mean, like. <laughs> Especially if it's like a like a like kind of off time or like a pause, but you know you, you want to keep their. You, but the, the the goal is to always keep their head, nodding. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, That's just the fun part about it, man. And, you know, um, and I learned that you know, drumming for the guys too. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Like just being able to uh, you know, complimenting what they're doing and you know like when something's kind of ill and you just kind of drop out, and come back. You know, just like a, what a regular drummer does. You know what I'm saying? Of a band. Yeah. So. And you know, listen to a lot of funk bands too, like a lot of meters and just growing up as a digger. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, just yeah, yeah. like how to drop out and all that stuff. It's just try to apply that now with the whenever I do stuff with the guys. You know what I mean? For sure, for sure. So Miami bass was the the thing for the sound systems. When did the digging come into effect? What, like, how did you get that that bug? Oh, uh, digging came into play about. Man, I'd say 93, 94. Mm. When I started going to New York for the first time for this uh for the new music seminars. Um okay, yeah. Yeah, when I when I was when I was in those battles, I I would go to, you know, different spots and um there was a there was a mixtape that got me into it. Um this cat named DJ Shame. Are you familiar with him? Vinyl Reanimators. Oh, that he made a mixtape of cool. this 
he just made a mixtape of just didn't really like mix it. I mean, or anything, but just it was original sample after original sample after sample after sample, yeah. and drum breaks. And I just that that mixtape just pretty much changed my life, man. I just like after that, I was like, I was on the quest for like trying to find a source of everything that I I hear and play, you know. Yeah. And, but in the process, that made me learn about different music, different kind of genres of music. So, um, yeah, man. I mean, that yeah, those early days definitely changed my life as far mm. as. Uh, being a record digger, buying records. It's funny because what hip hop did for us and our generation was it introduced us to songs so far back in the day, even mm -hmm. out of our own culture zone. It just, you know, it's actually crazy to think how, and as a B-boy, you'd be put to shame if you didn't go back and find out from source what your idols idolized right right i mean you know that was when i started listening to the first you know like the, the cassettes of, of of like theodore and flash and you know what i mean i just listen not not even on some scratch just on the selection that they're playing like what is that uh, like what is that what is that just a uh, curiosity man like that's what made me love djing even more you know what i mean yeah so, and until I got like, you get one copy. Oh man, I got a copy of this. Oh, I got two copies. I'm about to try it out right now. You know what I mean? That that <laughs> thrill. You know what I'm saying? So, it's it's. I don't know, man. I mean, I guess for 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 folks who don't really buy records, it's, it's just unexplainable. It's an yeah. unexplainable feeling. You know. So. Yeah, I do. I know exactly what you mean. I think it runs in tandem with them many sensory kind of for people who are creative. You know, whether it's graffiti writers in a tunnel when you smell the tunnel, it mm -hmm. takes you back to that thing, doesn't it? Yeah. There's you know what's funny? I, was actually, I actually listened to them Kid Capri 52 Beats the other day, right? Oh, damn. See, that's legendary. That's, it took me right back to me being like 18, 19 discovering it. <laughs> and that's another thing too, man, being being able to meet those guys now and being friends with them like over the over the years, like... That's another. Well, that's a whole other conversation. But that's you know. But this influence, like just to tell them, man, you, yo, your Fifty Two Beats mixtape was on rotation like crazy, man. Like you know, what I mean, like it's so dope. Yeah. Uh, to burn to the point where the tape burnt out. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 I had to have double copies of that recorded. So I went on the uh, I went on the YouTube version of the Fifty Two Beats. And they had the titles of each one of the breaks he was using as the exactly. tracks went along. That's not that's cheating, right? It, I, you know, it is, man. But you know, at the same time, I'm not mad at it now, just because if it if it helps the new generation kind of at least get you familiar with it. By all means, you know what I mean? Because mm. just just the stuff that we're into, it's I don't know, man. As a selector I, I, and a DJ, that's why I do my different themes every night, just so I can kind of get them open to it you know what i mean there's so much who you know if they're not going to look for it unless it's presented to them you know what i mean mm. they won't even know what to look for right so that's why now like I'm, I'm doing a lot of like you know i'll do i have a one night i call it gold chain rap and it's pretty much nice. like 82 to 989 hip-hop you know what I mean? yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Big so daddy they, kane just dice yeah kind of exactly thing. juice cruise you know I mean? and yeah. it's just for them to even just to, just so they don't just so they have an idea and i do and i actually mix videos as well in, in between oh. so it's like now it's like almost like a, a, a lightweight you know a, a subliminal kind of a history lesson at the same time you know oh, what I mean that's cold yeah so I do yeah I do I mean all my sets I do uh, video mixing except for the vinyl nights yeah yeah yeah, yeah you got some hefty vibe for those of you listening and watching Shortcut's got like his library on show from the back here it's crazy oh. you know it's crazy to, uh, you know it's funny is I have a show one of my nights is called Off the Shelves and that was you know and that's what I pretty much do during the show. I just go off the shelf and pick a record, doubles, play it. And before Twitch, that was my original uh, uh, live stream show. I used to really? do that. On Facebook. I used to do that Facebook video. Yeah, until they started being funny with the copyright. Exactly. Yeah. What, what, what? Curiously, so you're doing it five nights a week, and mm -hmm. that is that's more than you would normally do in a week if you were working in a normal club. Absolutely, it's crazy. <laughs> that must. Uh, that you, what's your What's your trajectory? Do you, are you anticipating that? You know, best case scenario that this just transfers into the live. So you're doing the Twitch and the live gigs at the yeah, same time. I mean, you know, I, if I get once 
I want to try it during my first, you know, when I ever get my first international booking again, I want to ask in the writer for a, a Ethernet wire to the booth. Oh, that's cold. You know what I mean? I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm going to invest in a, in a gaming a real real good gaming computer that puts out graphics good and maybe bring two webcams with me, one on me, one on the crowd. So I'll be you know it's it'll, it'll be dope. I can just go straight to my Twitch and yo all the way all the way live into London. You know we what, you know good good morning you know. While it's nighttime for us in London, yeah, yeah. I'll be like, "Oh, what's good morning to everybody in the Bay Area watching." You know what I mean? Like that's dope. Now that's you don't have so to be. Sick. Now you don't have to like fly somewhere to see your favorite DJ or you know or or see them play. You know, it's just it's so dope, man. You know. Yeah, and like you say, you know, if you can marry the 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 collect the record digger in you and the passing of knowledge conceptually with a format per show, that actually. That relaying that to a live event, you can create, you can customize the shows and almost have like a virtual room with the Twitch as well. That's crazy. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's just, it's, that's just what it is now, right? Like it's, it's, you know, the things that you always wanted possible are, are, are just becoming possible now. I mean, look, I'm, half of the DJs I see now on Twitch, I don't get to see them play or run it, you know, because we're probably, play, you know, I only see them if we're, if we're, kind of in the same city playing it like for instance me and craze yeah like yeah. <laughs> last time i was with him in person was in dubai you know what I mean? but now i see him dj five to, like three times a week you know what i mean it's it's, yeah. it's insane and yeah, yeah, yeah. It's smashing it and killing it and like you know i could i could talk to him at the same time and you know what i mean like normally if you're at a venue too you can't really talk to the crowd you know you talk to the crowd but you can't like inter you know interact with them and yeah now, yeah, yeah true yeah. so it's such a different world man just yeah, yeah, it's true. And also, I think there's a level of honesty now with the inter I spoke to Z Trip about this and well, what's nice is that DJs are actually playing stuff they want to play rather than oh, what Oh, absolutely. That's the big <sighs> one. I mean, you don't have to play that midnight set. You know what I mean? If you're a DJ, you know what I'm talking about when the midnight set comes. You have to play for like, you know, especially if it's if it's a venue where it's ball service or some something where you're put in a, in a position where it's like, oh, man, I got to play shit i don't want i don't want to play now that's why i'm like that's why i play different genres every night because you know i mean just for me it just keeps it like i don't know it's it's almost like i'm making a mixtape every night you know what i mean yeah 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 oh that's and I, and I record all my i you know i record every stream that i do so it's like i have a nice mixtape collection you know what i mean oh my god how many have you got so a year five five a week a year five a week but the first two months i was on six nights a week crazy so how many mixes have you dude how many how many mixes have you got i have, I have a lot <laughs> yeah and those are those are just my streams i'm not talking about the streams where i was kind of guested on with the with the homies you know what i mean like um you know it's 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 nuts man but you know like i said it's i'm thankful man like i i i think this the positive thing about this whole pandemic for me is i was able to expose you know to ex, uh, expose myself to a different audience that never knew who That's i was right. Or people who just knew me as a scratch DJ and never yeah. knew me as a selector. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. I, you know, and, and this again, just to relay, you know, from the from the time I met you, first saw you live, yo, like mixtapes you had to import. Now it's just like there. Yep. You know, you can do this shit, and Wait it's like. <laughs> What an error, it's fucking, man! It's, it's fucking crazy. I, I remember having to go to Fresh ninety seven with with fifty mix, fifty cassettes. You know what I'm saying? And slanging them in the front. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like just trying to <laughs> hustle hustle them all in the front for you know for five quid or something. Like it's crazy, man. Like. They, but again, you know that was the you know that was so so golden. You know, I loved it. Was, it. It's dope. Yeah. It, it definitely built character for a lot of us too, right? Like just kind of learn the hustle, learn the hustle, and. But at the same time, it's just that that raw, that raw shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> but that's certainly transferable. Like like you were saying, like now with technology being like, yo, paramount, and you doing five nights a week every year. That that to me is like you've transferred that hustle. You know, and and also what you're also showing people, young people especially, is patience. Uh, is a virtue it's the absolutely you, you know what i mean 
Yeah, no doubt, man. It's it's always you know, you know it's it'll all those things will come over time. You know what I mean? Like it's it's, yeah. and it's you know it's one of those things. You put the work you put in, the work that is what you get out of it, right? So yeah, yeah, so yeah that's what I'm true. saying. Like you know, like um, you know, another thing too. I was you know I went into this as a DJ. Now my own IT. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I gotta figure, <laughs> I gotta figure out know, stuff that I never knew. And I went back to PC after 20 years because I I, I stream off a of PC. I've been a Mac guy forever, so yeah. just stuff that I had to get used to at, over time. Is it, uh, you know, it's crazy. That, that man. the struggle's real. Like it struggle's is, real, bro. Struggle's real for sure. CPU exporting. Why is my fan going like the clappers? You know it's like- exactly all that. Like, what does this do? And then calling up my nerd friends and like. <laughs> Who, who who are just hip to it and you know what I mean? Um yo, crazy thing is my tower was made from Arabian Prince from NWA. What? Yeah, he made he he's responsible for a lot of our uh he made my tower, Z Trips, uh Jazzy Jeffs, Brett Maddox, Maceo's, like Yo, that's some fucking intel right there. Yeah, it's, it's crazy, cool. man. So, you know, just just it just shows you like, you know, cats who are kinda up on it before. That's why I, I big up my brother, uh, Arabian Prince, for putting me up on like all the, like the, the stuff that I needed to have in order to stream properly. Oh, he's proper techers. He's got oh, yeah, things he's down. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Really? Oh, yeah, man. Arabian Prince. Fucking Maceo. I mean, you know, casual, you know, Kid Capri. Like, you must sit in those circles sometimes, you know, and just be like, what am I doing here? At the <laughs> Absolutely. Every time, I'm, you know, on the other... I'm, I'm I'm definitely geeking out like, what the hell like, <laughs> but you know I, I'm but like I'm I'm also thankful to call those guys friends now. You know what I mean like, just to get to know them and like you know one thing I love about DJs is we definitely have a camaraderie and you know what I mean it's just it's a it's a brotherhood that we just that we all know we just kind of look out for each other. You know what I mean? Yeah, so that's some dope. shit. Yeah, yeah man. So, so. How did, how did the beat junkies come into play? How did how did because you, when you talk about brotherhood, well, like. Well, I mean, and it's like it's like a it's like a uh, a, a club. Yeah, man. It's um, you know, I mean, I was a beat junkie before I was a pickle. You know what I mean? Really? Okay, yeah. that's news. I don't know. That. Yeah, man. And and you know, it's just it's just one of those things. I remember me and D Styles went to DMC, uh, in L- in LA for the for the West Coast Finals, and we met up with Redmatic, and then he told us, "Hey, man." We just hit it up. We're like, yo, we got a group down here called the Beat Junkies. Like, you should come out and hang with us and, like, you know, and decipher with us. And, you know, yeah, yeah, we'll come down. And then we did. And then at one point, me and D Styles ended up going from coming to LA every other weekend just to hang out with them. You know what I mean? Wow. So it was just, just to cut it up and, you know, and kind of learn off each other. And it's crazy, man. Like, you know, and I'm just, you know, now we have a school together. You know, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah that's mad. Yeah. Yeah. Just um, just yeah, just looking at just make looking back at everything. It's just a, a great experience, man. Just yeah, to be able sure. to connect with like-minded cats, and you know, just the inspir- inspiration goes back and forth. So, you know? yeah, yeah, it's crazy. And you say you weren't in with it, so you weren't with the pickles. You were with the beat junkies first. Yeah, because mind you, uh, when I was when I around '93, it was still Apollo, Mike, and Kubert, the Rocksteady DJs. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know Rock City so, crew, hold tight. Yeah. How, so how did that all come about? As far as... Be, being, you know, inducted in Pickles, yeah. Pickles, oh, well, well, I mean, me me living in the Bay Area, I lived five minutes away from Q. So <laughs> he'd pick me up from the crib just to, pra- you know, so we could practice. And um, he would have me and DJ Disc. I don't know if you remember DJ Disc. Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Me and him would 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 uh, would open for Q's local shows. Like you know, he'd just bring us on just to kind of just put it, you know, scratch with Sick. him. Sick. And ever since then, and like you know, cause this is the time where like my Mixmaster Mike lived in Sacramento, so he lived far away, mm. and uh, Apollo was DJing for a brand for Marsalis, so it was just me, you know, me Disc and Q, and we would kind of you know, we said, hey, we should make a, a crew right here. You know what I mean? And that's when Mike came in, came back, and then Apollo came back. So, 
Wow, yeah, it's mad. What did your family think? Because it being so close to Cuba, I guess there was a and you doing the sound system stuff. But what did what did your parents think about you getting into this DJ thing like that? You know, like scratching I mean, you know, to that level. Anybody who knows about how it is with Asian parents, they really expect you to be a doctor or a lawyer or something, something you know along those lines, right? Yeah, Rhett um, Mike alluded to that. Yeah, but um, you know. I mean, thankfully, and I, I, I still thank my mom to this day that she was super supportive. She bought me my first 1200s. You know what I mean? She knew that how much passion I had for it. It definitely kept me out of trouble. Because, you know, back in the days for me, I mean, for a Filipino kid in the Bay Area, either you were part of a gang or, or, or you were a DJ. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. She pretty much kept me in the house because I just kept practicing. So, hey, she's, but, she's you know, like I said, there was so many DJs in the Bay Area especially if you're a Filipino. That's that's what it was out here. It was crazy. So you really had to cut you had to cut your teeth and get get good. Um I mean it's definitely competitive for sure, you know. Um like I said there was uh there was about 100 mobile 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 uh sound systems in the Bay Area at one point. 100. Man. So you can imagine who's fighting for what, you know what I mean? Like everyone's fighting for that 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 big birthday or wedding at the end, of, you know, at the end of the week, kind of thing, you know. <laughs> and there's only a couple of sound systems that just stood out, but there's a lot that just died out. Yeah, yeah. How many people were in a sound, per sound system? Did you have like a, a, you know, tech guys and things like that? Per yeah. Sound so system? it was. Uh, I was one of three DJs, and then there was like eight uh, guys who set up, like set up the sound lights, screw, you know, set up the truss. Yeah. Everything, yeah. So we oh. always ran like, you know, but it was it was also just more of a for at least for my group, it was just a reason for us to hang out. Because <laughs> because at the end of the night we just blew it on on food. You know what I mean? Like just it fed everybody kind of thing. You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I, I can imagine that the parties were fun, man. Like oh yeah, yeah, definitely, man. And, you know, a lot of a lot of big, a lot of big events. You know what I mean? Like. Um, I didn't get to go to it because I wasn't old enough, but like I heard when Mantronics first came out to one of these sound system gigs out here. What? That was big. Yeah, man. You know what I mean? And I think I think Apollo and Cuba were one of the, their their sound systems were part of it. Yeah, yeah. Q's like the biggest Mantronics fan. <gasps> oh yeah. I, me myself, I'm definitely yeah, yeah, yeah. a Mantronics fan. Total total G. Yeah. Original trap. Right. Yeah, yeah, for real. You, you, and it, it, people need to get to know. People get it. Yeah, people gotta recognize that straight up. Yeah, that's for original. Sure. That's pre trap. That's pre uh, Manny Fresh. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah, all of that. Yeah, crazy. Man. It's mad, isn't it? How th that's another thing that you know when I watched you guys do your thing all that time ago, and I refer to it because it was such an impactful thing. But you were, you know, you were cutting the eight oh eights, and you know, doing the. I mean, those battle tools alone were. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, you know, it's, they had all the components. Just because you know, you you want everything handy right in front of you, right? You don't want to have to switch records for that one sound kind of thing. Hey, but you know, it's it, before the battle break stuff, man. I gotta give it to Simon Harris. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. all that early stuff that we got yeah. out in the area, all the Music Life records with just all the sounds on it, even though it's just. Eh, yeah, or, I mean, like it wasn't. Just yeah, the idea life, was there. The idea, yeah, the idea was, there. was absolutely. You know, yeah, I feel so. that. And there was a couple of other, you know, breakbeat kind of sample vinyls and things like that, wasn't there? Like high school breaks and shit like that. Those, that's that's like a one se uh, one section of my record collection that I always keep, like just all breaks, battle breaks. You know what I mean? And yeah. All the ones that's that the people, all the ones that people made over the years, you know. Yeah, I loved that. I, I used to have a bunch of them, but you know, with the the battle tool scene, it became a scene. It's like a four wheel drive. All of a sudden, you were like, it was all yeah. It, the stabilizers were off, and you you were able to create routines in a heartbeat, just having back to back. Sound. I mean, you know, and it changed it changed routines, right? Like yeah. routines at one point were like a, a, people flipping doubles of songs, and now people were flipping battle breaks because just they all felt kind of different and. So many multiple sounds you can mess with, right? So. You know who, who my opinion, in my opinion, who was the a bit of a king, where, it, where it came to that that level of battle break, carpet cutting. Uh, I think develop. Yeah, develop was just like sh he would just, you know, ruthlessly tear through <laughs> battle yeah. tools without any thinking. 
Yeah, man. He killed. He 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 was he was definitely one, uh, one of the he was one of the uh, of the of, the, uh, of the, the early DJs who were doing that style. You know what I mean? Like, who were the forerunners in your mind of that era? You know, the ITF DMC era. Who, who would you say, yo, the ones that didn't get the props that you think, yo, they were sick? <sighs> Where do you start? Yeah, so many, man. You know what I mean? That's that's, I you know every to me to me the. I'll, I won't even say a specific DJ, but there's so much, so many DJs from that era made so much like memorable routines. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. like right now, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, to, I'm not even trying to shit on the new generation at all, but like you knew Babu's Blind Alley routine. You knew yeah. Sinister's SWAT routine. You know what I mean? Like those are the ones that I feel are the, are the ones that are memorable because you know, when they made another song of their own production kind of thing, you know? Mm-hmm. And that's what I miss about, that's what I miss about routines right now. Like, just that, that kind of like, kind of messing, just dealing with what you have in front of you and just flipping it. Because that, yeah. that takes a lot of, you know what I mean? That takes a lot of, of, of messing around trial and error, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, as opposed to being able to, you know, make uh, something on, on Ableton where everything falls into place when you, when you juggle. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like I said, I'm not. I mean, like I said, I'm not. I'm not trying to shit on, shit on that style, but like you know, I'm just saying maybe call me a dinosaur. But like from that, I come from that era where, you know, what? Here, here's two of these co- copies of this. Fuck it up right there. You know what I mean? That's and, like the ultimate challenge, isn't it? It's the, it the, is. The, it it really is, and it, it, to me, it just brings up you know, that 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 um. I don't know, that sense of just knowing what to do with certain things. Once you hear certain sounds, once you hear a, a kick with a snare real quick, you know what I mean? Like, you know what to do with it right away kind of thing. Yeah. You, but you never touched that record before. You know what I mean? Like, so, the whole oh, thing. That's makes, so sick. Yeah, man. I mean, that, that's the reason why I got into DJing in the first, or, or battles at least in the first place. Watching Steve D, watching Raider, watching Rob Swift, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Watch those guys flip songs of, that I knew, but then... They made it totally their own thing, and now I I'll never hear that song the same anymore because I'm, I'm always gonna I'm always gonna associate this song with them. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's 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 true. And to me, that sounds like hip hop shit, straight up. You know what I mean? Like, so doesn't get more hip hop than that. Um, um, the production value of what you're talking about there as well, like, yeah. Uh, that as a fact once you've heard a dj do something to perfection you can't listen back to the uh, original but but there, there was also i also felt like within those battles whether it is you know was it three minutes for a uh was it three minutes for itf six for dmc i can't yeah, six minutes for a dmc and then the eliminations for uh for dmc was two and then for, but for itf it was uh yes either a minute or 90 seconds i forgot that's it. I mean, you've got to think of your beginning, middle, and end. You've got to think about the world, the build-up and breakdowns and things like that. Like, I I loved that about the the musicality in in battling. Period. I love. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, you know, it's 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 in its rawest form. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. So uh, yeah, like like I said, man. I just uh, those are the days I wish came back. As far as actually through a battle last year in LA during the NAMM convention and the battle I threw was all vinyl. Like they had, it was all vinyl head to head. Nice. And then one of the, and then one of the, the rounds, I put like a crate of all the most famous doubles you could think of. Peter Piper, Eric B is president, all that. And then like I had Aladdin, Aladdin was one of my judges and he would what? Just, he'd go into the crate and pull it out. Peter Piper. So those copies go to the first DJ and they have like one minute to, to mark them and mess with it. And then when they're done, they have to hand it to the next DJ. Oh, that is sick. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, just like on some, so that's on some like freestyle. That's on some, you know, how to recover if you skip. You know what I mean? Like all those kind of factors. Those are, I don't know. It's what you're doing is you're separating the men from the boys. You're basically saying, yo, you've got to earn it. (laughs) Pretty much, man. And, you know, we keep, you know, the, the end of the, you know, the, our prize was two twelve hundreds, and from technique, yeah. and like you know, belt. You know what I mean? Like a, a like a like a seminar, a, 
a new music seminar style belt. Like, yeah, 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 man. Like, you know, just wanted to bring it back on some like just some real like who got who got who got you know who has the who's in the know kind of thing. It's interesting actually because now, as you were talking, I was thinking to myself, what well, you know, how does reggae deal with this situation? Because yo. They have carnivals and things like this where at its rawest form you bring your sound system rig into a random place and you just got to bring the... You're actually fighting for space as well as the audience and, you know, all the other environmental factors. There, there should be something like that for hip-hop DJing, right? Like, back to the block. Yeah. I mean, that'd be dope, you know? <laughs> I'm saying. I mean, you know, um, you know it's, it's also, you know, who's willing to do it, right? Yeah. That's that's a that's a that's a that's a big thing. Like you know, for me, like I said, this with this whole streaming thing, hey man, I'm still just DJing. But now, like I said, now I have to really be mindful of uh, being an IT, getting you know, all this stuff ready, and then you know, knowing how to how to design a fl- you know, learning how to design a flyer and how you want to, you know, promote it, and everything is like you on it falls on you now, right? So, does it ever feel like it gets on top of your shirt? Hmm. I mean, what do you what do you mean? Like, as far as well, certainly from my point of view, in doing a podcast, whilst searching for gigs, whilst doing the promo every episode, whilst you know the camera goes out, the camera goes on, the and it's like you do become a little bit kind of sanitized to these scenarios that come at you in your head. But um, or actually, there was a saying I heard the other day: um, "What's normal for the spider is uh, is a nightmare for the fly." <laughs> You just got to be more spider, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, like, there's no blueprint to this right now for a lot of us. You know what I mean? And just you know, we're kind of, you know, it's definitely a learn as you go, and you know, you learn what to do, what what you know, the do's and don'ts of you know what works and what doesn't work. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. after a year, man, I could say I I I, 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 you know what? Just in all this, even this with the DJing, we're gonna be forever students of this, right? So for real. Um, but as far as like you know, just the new norm. I'm, I'm, I'm just adapting to it, man. I'm just trying to figure it out, and you know, thankfully, like I said, like you know, with DJs, we're, we're, we have a camaraderie where like we pretty much kind of share the information of what makes stuff work. Um, there's plenty of people that didn't to, that that have had trouble with this this year of lockdown. Um, it's it's a real reset for a lot of people, and it's a fight or flight situation. You've got you have to be you have to react and and just just make it fucking work, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I I, I think. Just, you know, just working with what you have, too. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm thankful that I have the equipment to, to do what I have to do to to make it work. But at the same time, like, you know, you just got to fight through it and just, and just try to, you know, this is the time more than ever to collaborate. If you don't have something that's that is not within your reach, hook up with someone that, you know, that, that is streaming maybe or, or has a, a tool that you need to make what you got. Yeah, 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 you're right. It's you know, that's what I'm saying. Like right now, I'm glad that like there's a there's a whole lot online community of DJs, yeah, yeah. and you know, it's working, man. It is. So. What do you think about the porter scene? You know, the the mini DJ scene. Oh, you mean portable? The the portable is, um Yeah, <laughs> my, my my girlfriend DJ Lock. She's 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 part of that portable scene. And Hold tight, go and get into the picture. Come on, man. Real quick, just flash, just flash. I'm so dirty. No, 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 no. I'm like stained all over. All right, this is DJ Lock. Hello. What's good, Lock? How are you? Hello. I'm good. What's up? Lock up, lock up, lock up, lock up. Oh. Yeah, but you know, <laughs> she kills it on the cut, and she, you know, and um, she was heavy into the portable scene, and still is. You know, what I mean, like she, you know, we have a bunch of portable turntables in the house, but that's what she, you know. <laughs> Well, you cut it over, a, you know, so a lot. She's cutting over. I mean, it's dope. I think just being able to have it handy when you you want. And I, yeah. I right before lockdown, we went to um, we went to Asia, and we brought the portable turntable with us. Yeah, we scratched in Japan. We scratched in Japan. We scratched in freaking Singapore, Singapore, Thailand, just the Philippines, Philippines, just to kind of like you know, just so we never feel like we're away from it, kind of thing, you know. That's amazing. What's it like YouTube being like? DJs and being in like those having sharing those moments together that that must be like a whole new trip it's you know <laughs> she's the like I said she's the illest Spartan partner oh my gosh ah, she hates me giving her compliments but she's she's dope if you if you guys haven't checked out um 
our streams. Like, you know, we, we do an Easter egg kind of thing where, like, you okay. know, we'll do a little stream and then, like, you know, we'll say goodbye to everybody. But we'll still have, like, the um, the, the exit page on. And then we'll start playing, like, a, 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 a just a breakbeat and come back That's in. That's sick. And then we'll start cutting it up for, like, another, what, hour or two hours? <laughs> and just, you know, just to kind of keep that vibe. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I'm my roots is definitely turntablist as well. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, but at the same time, that's how we love showing the world. Like you know, what I mean, like this is what we do too. You know, what I mean, like we, you know, it just keeps us sharp. It's cool as shit. Do yeah. do you? Because you know, this is where the questions get a little bit more spicy. I want to I want to ask you very specifically because there's two of you there now, right? And I'm sure there'd be angles that maybe you know, either one of you would have thought of, but. How much of that scratching is habitual? Like, do you feel like there's a repetition there that, as a DJ, as a scratch DJ, it, it, it fulfills that that irritant in your head of like, yo, I got to scratch more. Not so much. I, you know what? I think it's a balance. Just because we stream, we stream so much, we do we, we do the, the you know the different genre thing. Yeah. It's almost just the, the balance at the end of everything. Like, okay, let's let's cut it up now. You know what I mean? And like. And is it course, like guitar riffing? Is it like like at some Eddie Van Halen riff? Is it like that for you? Like it's lead. I don't know. What do you think? Like it's just a feeling. Like we just at the end of the show. Yeah. How how it, how it is? Well, it's a different demeanor. Like the, the show's more. The show is more professional. You know, he for for his set part, he's more um, like he's more structured. So at literally at the end of the show, he puts he puts the ad up like we're gonna leave, and then we come in the picture, and then I like I like it being chill. Like I, I yeah. don't, it's it's totally different. It's my you know, it really is how we practice. And during the pandemic, we just let's watch, practice yeah, live. Let's, let's, let's have people watch us practice. I mean, you know what I mean, we, we always yeah, tell me. we always say it too. Like you know, what's up to everybody in the room? We dim we dim the lights, just kind of get that like, kind of living room feeling, and we tell everybody, yo, look. Um, Find a spot on our couch, hang out. If you're drinking something, just you know, salute. If you're smoking something, pass it to the left and just watch us cut it up. You know what I mean? Oh, that is so cold. I've got to check this out, bro. I've got to jump into this. This is so much fire. Yeah, we usually do it kind of on the weekends. So. And this is Alani. She's crying right now because she got used to being in the picture when we stream. Yeah. So. Oh, so. She's like, what about me? So this is like the mascot vibe. She's, she's mascot. <laughs> Yes, yeah. yes. Everybody is, knows her in the chat. Yeah, everyone knows her in the chat. Yeah. <laughs> this, uh, see, I feel like I'm late to the party, bro. <laughs> no, you know, it's, 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 it, like I said, too, it's like, you know, it's it's that interaction with the crowd, too, you know what I mean? Or the, with, the, well, with the chat room. Mm. Make them feel like, making them feel like they're not at home, you know what I mean? They're, they're you know what I mean? That's, yeah, that's I do. The of all this. Like, you know, we're, we're letting you guys into our house. We're letting you, to, we're letting you guys hang out on our couch and just yeah. what we do, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, this is going to be really hard to transfer into a live invite. You know, you're going to have to get the dog out, you know, you're going to have to get the couch, the whole thing. <laughs> you got to create a Wayne's World environment, bro. I mean, that's what it is in here. If you, I mean, if you were to see what it looks like in here, it's kind of on some Wayne, Wayne's World environment. Just that's the code. Makeshift everything, you know, there's the tower there and monitor. I mean, like this, it's just set up as just kind of like a mini TV station. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I do know exactly because my place is exactly like it. And what starts as a really nice, humble living room for, a t <laughs> for a t you know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All of a sudden, it's like, where did all these fucking tripods come from? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, one right there, one right there, one right there. Like, hey, man, but you know, it's, it's, Hey, now you know just the the comfort of being the comfort of your own home and then just doing what you love and showing people that it's it's so, it's so it's great, man. I can't you know, I mean, like to you know to be not not having to travel. I mean, I love don't get me wrong, I love traveling. I miss the UK. I miss you know, what I mean, I love I miss going places, but mm. I'm not mad at this. I'm not, I'm not mad at waking up and not having it. You know, what I mean, like I mean, I'm putting myself out there, but sometimes I'll you know I'll be still be in my my PJs. But, <laughs> and I slippers. feel you. And slippers. You were home. You know what I mean? You guys are in our house. So I was like, so yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think for these reasons alone, 
going back into the international uh, uh, circuit, DJ circuit, I, I don't think we'll ever be the same again for all the for a, a, a bunch of right reasons as well as well we'd lost this but we bet we gained this. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I, I you know I really hope the reset button got pushed. This me too. With everything. I mean, just for me as as a DJ, traveling DJ, like I said, like sometimes when I get booked out to certain countries, and they want you know it happens to be a ball service spot that wants to hear mm -hmm. that music. I, I I hope this kind of reset. You know what I mean? Like that's why you're not here. You can't for the last year. You can't really hear much music about popping balls right now, right? Like there's no way to pop mm -hmm. those balls. But we at home. Yeah. You know, like what are you gonna say? Yeah. But you know, yeah. Time it's like I. I one of my big things I hope that comes out of it from my stream at least is I'm putting people up on just music that they may have missed or they miss hearing or they wish that was they could hear in public or I mean you know when things open up again that would you know the, it, funny enough I'm doing I'm doing a bunch of you know I got booked out for a couple of more local gigs and right because you know, it's kind of opening up out here uh -huh. and um one spot wants me to play nothing but soul like you know That's and then another spot but reggae, you know what I mean? Like, because they've seen me, oh, because we've seen what you do on your stream. We want you to, can you do a set like this for us? So it's like, so, you know, it's just so many, you know, so many different things coming out of this, man, I, I could say. You know? Yeah. Real positive shit, man. And yeah, more power to that. Yeah. And, you know, like, we're also, as DJs, we're healers, right? So it's like, we're healing with them at the same time, we're, you know, I'm all, like I'm always thankful. Like man, you guys could be anywhere else, but you guys are down to listen to us for like the next two hours. Thank you. You know what I mean? Like, so it just it goes both ways. You know, nothing beats. And on a few occasions over the year, which you know, when I've had time, I've jumped in and to a DJ mix, and there's nothing better than cracking a cold one with a couple of friends in the room within your social bubble and listening to someone else play tunes. Yeah, it's dope. You know what I mean? It's, it's, mm. It's awesome. I mean, that's why, you know, it's like a being able to do this DJ show. I can, you know, I still treat it as a show. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that's like the whole bell, I guess the bell DJ in me, where like, I got to keep these, you know, what am I going to do to keep you guys engaged and not want to leave? You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's why I, you know, with, within like, I'll do the whole genre thing, but then I'll still, I'll try to cut it up too, just to kind of keep them there. Like, cause I know there's probably people, like you said, they're like you and your mates, you know, it's cracking beers and just, but you guys are watching someone play. Like, what do you want to see that person do? Kind of thing, you know? Yeah. yeah so it's best, man. Yeah, yeah, so. Well, I will not keep you any longer as a man that is ultimately juggling tripods with different cameras, with different laptops on. The DJ scene is, does not stop a minute. Thank you so much for joining, joining oh, us, Shulk. Thank you for ha having me. This is a great conversation. Thank you for having me on, man. I appreciate it. My brother, anytime. Next time you, you're in the UK, you can come and sit here with me and we'll do it again. No doubt. For sure. Oh, definitely. definitely, definitely. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Killer Podcast. Out like it was out of fashion, the mighty DJ shortcut. Word up. Stay lucky, people. Sharing is caring. Don't forget to tell a friend. Till next week. Peace. Peace.